Spring is here and I have three flips to celebrate the beginning of the season. I am just smitten with the final project and hope that you'll stick around to see it. Would you look at this little cutie? Someone made this from real wood probably in their garage. I'm going to start by popping this sticker off and we're going to fill in there at the top where it says friends don't lie. I'm curious to know the story behind that one, but moving on, we're going to cover it up and fill this piece in so that we can get it ready for paint. I covered the entire piece in turquoise acrylic paint, and I did not paint at all where the drawer tucks in. On this one, I'm using a few different Timu products, starting with this paper, which I think is absolutely beautiful. So I'm just looking through the stack here, showing you the different designs and choosing the ones that I like. And then I'm going to just simply cut them down to fit in two different areas of the box. I love home decor, but I really love home decor that's practical and functional. After all, if we didn't have things that were functional, we'd have just a house full of home decor that takes up space but has no real use. That's why I'm typically attracted to items just like this at the thrift store. With just a little bit of love, we can turn this into a charming, functional piece you can keep, gift, or sell. And here I am just testing the fit before gluing it in. And I'm going to use a moderate amount of Mod Podge here. This is scrapbook weight paper, so it does need a little bit more than the light coat you'd use if you were applying napkins or rice paper. I'm applying it to the wood part inside the box as well as the back of the paper. I've seen few people do this, but if you apply the Mod Podge to the back of the paper or other medium that you're applying, you will deal with fewer wrinkles. And once I have both pieces of my paper on, I'm going to flip it over and just trim up the top piece here. And I'll lightly sand the edges to clean them up. I definitely felt like the blue was too bright for the type of piece I was going for. So what I'm doing here is just applying a little bit of my antiquing wax using a damp baby wipe. And that's going to give me just a little bit of depth in that paint. I'm not going real heavy here and I will wipe back whatever does not settle in the cracks and crevices of the paint. Moving on, I wanted to add some type of an embellishment to the top part of our wood piece. So I'm using this mold again from Timo, and I'm just going to paint it in the same color turquoise that I did the rest of the box in. And once dry, I use gilding polish to bring out the details. I used Type Bond quick and thick wood glue to attach it to the box. I wanted to add a little nostalgia to this piece, so I'm just using a flat head brush and dabbing on some more of that gold polish throughout the paper design. Again, from Timu, I have these elephant-shaped legs. They don't have a way to screw them on, so I will attach them using super glue. I had painted this drawer white originally and added on this interesting handle from Hobby Lobby, but I wanted more gold, so I am simply going to cover this again in the gilding polish, allow it to dry, and reattach the handle. Here is the final result. I really hope that you like this one as much as I do. Drop me a comment down below and let me know what you think about this transformation. Are you ready for cute? I'm ready for cute. I found these two interesting pieces at Goodwill. I didn't find them in the same trip. I first found the wood tree thing and then on a second trip back found this little white house which I think is winter decor. I'm going to start by removing the bottom of the house. I do that by first scoring over 
the paint with an exacto knife where I need the two pieces to part ways. And then I'm able to easily shimmy the two pieces apart. And I'm going to use a hole saw to drill a hole through the center of this bottom piece. I was on pins and needles because I'd never used a hole saw on such a thin piece of wood before, but everything turned out okay. Here I'm just showing you that you'll usually need to go back and pull out the wood chunk that you drilled before storing it away again. Right now I am just using my blade to scrape off the simulated snow. These are probably the smallest pieces of white glitter I've seen in my life. It took me a few minutes to scrape and sand these off, but I did get the roof in a good place. Moving back to the bottom piece, I'm going to use painter's tape on the underside to prevent glue that I'm going to apply here in just a moment from leaking down through the hole. So now I'm going to bring in our second piece, this wood tree looking thing, and I'm going to feed it through that hole and start to attach it with a modest amount of hot glue. I'm only applying the amount of hot glue that I need and I'm doing it in two different layers. So I apply the first layer, let it cool, and then I go in with a second layer and let it cool all while trying to hold this piece as level as possible. And here I am just verifying that it is indeed level and hey, we didn't do too bad. After removing that painter's tape, I see that only a small amount dripped through and I'm going to use my knife again just to cut that piece off to make sure that it has a nice flush appearance and later cover this area up with a little bit of moss. But for now, we're going to move on to the bottom. I'm using a piece of scrap floral foam and just cutting it into smaller pieces and kind of shoving it in there at the bottom. This is used primarily as a filler. Off camera, as to not bore you, I filled this bottom part up with a couple of different shades of moss. And now I spend a few minutes filling it up with florals and foliage to give this a beautiful lush and whimsical look. If you're new here, my name is Melissa, and I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you so much for stopping in, and thank you to all my returning viewers. You all mean so much to me and have brought this channel the success that it's seen today. If you haven't already subscribed, if you've just been watching and not subbing, please consider doing so. This channel will continue to bring you new, unique ideas that you can pass on and share with your friends. Here I'm taking a little of my Spanish moss to make a bird's nest. Now I've seen bird's nests be perfectly round, but a real bird's nest is really messy. And I like my projects to simulate what you'd actually find out in nature. So I'm not gonna take any time and try to ball it up nicely. I'm gonna shove it inside this wicker looking ball and then I'm gonna glue two small faux eggs together and set them inside. I wanted to expand the tree a little, so I went out back and clipped a branch from my honeysuckle vine. It has a nice curve to it, which I thought would frame the ball nicely. To accessorize that single branch, I added some sprigs of boxwood and a small strand of fairy lights. Off camera, I reattached the top of the house to the base using wood glue and I'm using a little bit of painter's tape to hold everything in place while I continue to work. I got this mini strip of flowers from Timu and I'm going to use these to flock the front door. I'm so excited to show you the final reveal. Here she is lit up. But look how cute this looks next to the bunny rabbit we created in the last video. If you have not yet seen that video, you can find the link in the description box below should you want to check it out. I added a package miniature to the front porch right in front of the door. And I think the package delivery starts the story of this project because now you have to wonder how the Amazon or UPS delivery driver 
was able to get this package on the porch. Maybe by drone? I don't know. Please, please let me know. Drop me a comment and let me know what you think about this transformation. I often see these countertop book holders at the thrift store and the possibilities for them are endless. I'm going to start by removing the screws that were already in here and holding the piece together. My plan is to add dowels to this project, so I'm going to take just a moment to measure and mark where I will place them. There is no room for error on this one, so I'm taking my time and making sure that my marks for where the dowels will go are exactly where I need them to be. And then using a drill bit, the same thickness as the dowel rods I'm using, I will start to drill the holes, not all the way through, but just a quarter of an inch through the wood. And now for the repair work, I will fill in the holes that we pulled the screws from as well as that carving of, I believe, a ram. I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> and I'll set this to dry for about 15 minutes before I come back and sand it smooth. Now I'm going to take four random dowels from my stash and cut them each down to eight inches. Off camera, I painted them all in a dark brown shade to make them match. And now painting the base of our unit in Admiral Blue acrylic paint and covering all four sides, top and bottom in this shade. I'm pulling my color choices for this project direct out of the fabric that I purchased from Hobby Lobby. This fabric is so beautiful, feels and looks like spring and I'm excited to use it. That said, the sides will be painted in moss green chalk paint. And when dry, I'll give that a coat of clear wax. Using tight bond quick and thick wood glue, I'm attempting to start gluing my pieces together. But while I like this glue, I do not like the dispensing of it. Glue bottles with the squeeze type dispensing cap are a serious pain point for me. I will struggle throughout the next however many minutes of this video with trying to dispense the glue and get the project together. And many times just resort to removing the cap using my finger or other tools to get the glue where I need it. I resorted to dipping the ends of the dowel rods into the glue bottle and then just dumped some of it out on this piece that I'm gonna glue on next. What a mess. I'm really sorry, friend. I don't mean to be a complainer, but at almost $10 a bottle, this should be easier. I think by this point, I've already cleaned the dispensing cap two to three times made the hole larger in it and it's still dispensing like it's clogged. Getting back to what's important, you can see that I am beginning to piece this unit together with the dowel rods in the middle. And here I'm taking a longer piece of that fabric where off camera I had sewn down the edges all the way around the piece of fabric. And this is just so that it doesn't fray. You can use fabric glue or fabric fusion tape if you do not have a sewing machine. And as a last resort, you could hot glue these edges down. Once I've fed the fabric through the piece under those two bottom dowel rods, it's time to get it attached to the overall piece. If you haven't guessed, we are making a miniature sized magazine rack. So this is again, like I said in the beginning, it's a throwback. Most of us have had one of these in our home growing up or at some point. So this is just kind of, you know, what I saw when I saw this wood piece at the thrift store. It immediately appeared in my brain and I came home and tried to put together how it would look and what, what I would do to make it happen. On either side, I am folding over a flap and gluing those down in place. And then I'm going to go to one side and start working. I'm just pulling it over and around that top dowel rod on the one side and then tack it in place with hot glue. And I know some of you are probably thinking that I could have sewn this instead of using hot glue and fed it onto the rods before sticking the end on. But trust me when I tell you that I have tried that and it just turned into a nightmare. If that's what you want to do, feel free to do it that way. It's probably the correct way to do it. 
but I have so little time already to craft and I want to make sure that I'm not struggling when I craft. I want to enjoy the process and sometimes that might mean a shortcut here or there. I'm using Gorilla Hot Glue here and that is perfect for all surfaces including fabric. It'll give it a nice durable hold and you don't have to worry about anything falling apart. Once I have the first side done, I'm going to take a look at it and kind of shimmy things around a little so that the layers of fabric look right. And then I'll flip it over and repeat the same process on the opposite side, but make sure that I'm pulling the fabric taut. Once the bag inside is completely attached, I could very easily stop here and it would be a beautiful piece. But love is in the details, friend. So we're going to put a few embellishments on here to make this look like it's intentional and be something somebody would like to have in their home. I found a pink nameplate in my stash and I'm just using the gold gilding polish to turn it into a gold piece instead. And I'm tapping the flat brush over the surface of it to give it more of a hammered look. While the polish on that is drying, I'm gonna go back to the piece and add some upholstery tacks to the ends, just two on each side to give it a more finished look. And once that's done, I'm contemplating feet on this pretty little girl. What do you think? Should we put feet on it? I'm going for yes all the way. I have these 18 millimeter wood beads that are flat on one side and they are so perfect for adding height or feet on your projects. I'm going to attach them with that same tight bond quick and thick glue we've been using throughout the project. I set that aside for about five minutes to dry, but then I'm ready to come back and attach that nameplate. So I have this little hand drill. You probably have one in your stash as well. If you don't, they're very inexpensive on Amazon's website. I think you can even get them from Walmart, but I'm just drilling the hole in there with my hand. And then I can go back with a screwdriver that also comes in the set and put those little screws in. And then I'm going to take a paintbrush with more of that gilding polish and cover up those screws. While doing this, I noticed that there was a little bit of blue paint on the one bead that I was using as a foot. So I'm going to just take my sandpaper and sand that away and it'll look like it was never there. Turning my attention to the final step and the sides of this project, I'm going to use some Mod Podge and add on some of these pressed leaves. Now I'm going to Mod Podge over the entire surface because we don't want it to look like there's shininess on and around the leaves and not the rest of it. So just to make sure it's all cohesive, you'll see me as I Mod Podge the leaves on and then also cover the entire side surface here with Mod Podge too. With good adhesion here, you can count on these leaves staying on and never falling off. I'm going to do this on both sides of the project and set it aside to let the Mod Podge dry. And if you are still with me in this video, thank you so much. You are my original OGs. You are my supporters. This channel recently reached 1,000 subscribers, and I can't tell you how much it warms my heart. I'm pretty sure I cried, although I'm not going to admit just how much, but I just felt so overwhelmed by the amount of support that my channel has received. I never expected to have 1,000 followers on this channel. And it really, really does mean the world to me. Each and every one of you, your subscription, your support, the time you spend with me means so, so much. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here. And I have talked enough about that. I'm ready to show you how this piece looks once it's done. And so very excited to hear your feedback. And although I am staging this with florals inside of it to show you what it would look like with florals, I don't intend to use florals in this project. I don't put florals in everything that I create. I hope that doesn't disappoint anyone, but I do love functional pieces. Otherwise my house would just be cluttered. And um, I think it makes it something that somebody is more likely to buy if it's a functional piece that they can use. So pop your remote controls in here, pop your favorite book in here, you know, um, whatever you need handy or like to have handy when you're maxing and relaxing. If you cannot find something to use this for, then go ahead and put florals in it. I promise not to judge you. But please let me know in the comments what you think about this transformation. 
I hope the flips in this video have inspired you to try your own. Here's another video that I think you might like. And until next time, craft what you love.